The suspected gunman in a deadly shooting at a gay nightclub in Colorado is expected to make his first court appearance by video Wednesday. Five people were killed, more than a dozen were injured. The suspect faces murder and hate crime charges. For more on the legal angle of this case, I'm joined by Michael J. Allen, District Attorney for Colorado's 4th Judicial District. Uh, let's start. The suspect, the suspected gunman is facing hate crime charges. What will have to be proven in such a case, and, and what more can you tell us, if anything, about a motive? Well, first and foremost, it's important to know the distinction. He's actually, we have not filed any charges yet. Okay. The, the charges that have been reported are the arrest charges. It's very likely that the Final formal charges will be different, potentially much more expansive than the arrest charges. But as far as the bias motivated uh, crimes, which is what they're called here in Colorado, but essentially people know them as hate crimes, we would have to show that he had some sort of animus and that he specifically targeted uh, some groups. Um, sexual orientation is one of the groups that would fall under that sort of uh, uh, matrix. and. You know, there's there's obviously some evidence here that uh, that may have been a target location for that reason. The suspect was l arrested last year for allegedly threatening his mom with a homemade bomb and, and some other weapons. Colorado does have a, a red flag law that could have possibly taken the weapons. Is there any reason why he wasn't prosecuted for this before? Those red flag laws weren't put in place. Well, so I think you're you're jumping ahead a little bit as far as uh, to a conclusion that I don't think is necessarily supported. One thing I want to point out is that Colorado has very restrictive sealing statutes. And so if a case is dismissed, whether it's by a judge or by the prosecution, and those are the two parties that can dismiss a case, uh, once that happens, it's almost automatic that a case is sealed. And if a case is sealed, it means that I can't really talk about it. Um, in fact, the statute requires me to say that uh, no such record exists. That's a frustrating response, I know, to the situation here. There's been a lot of reporting, and I know there's been a uh, press release that was obtained from last year mm -hmm. regarding a person with the same name. But legally, so that we don't impact our ability to prosecute um, this defendant going forward for this senseless act of violence, it's heinous. Um, I need to be very careful about what I say and don't say as it relates to what you just asked about. Well, well to, to make sure that this doesn't get anybody in trouble, does that mean also that that information can't be used to prevent anything? So as it relates to the red flag law, um, the DA's offices are not really in a position to initiate red flag, uh, temporary restraining orders, or even permanent um, restriction of the right to possess firearms. That is actually carried out by our local law enforcement agencies. And, and that's not any different than a typical way that a case gets to us anyway. The DA's office does not initiate our own investigations, except for on a very small uh, type of cases, uh, never on homicide cases for sure, never on gun cases, never on bomb cases, that kind of thing. And so it's really imperative for the outside agencies that we work with, um, if they see concerning aspects that they take on uh, trying to seize somebody's weapons and, and potentially preventing them from owning weapons. This, I know you can't talk specifically about this uh, uh, suspect's case. Already on law enforcement's radar, obviously from, uh, uh, from previous cases, but looking forward, how, how do you push forward from this? Is there anything that law enforcement on the ground and in the courts can learn from this? Well, you know, I think that there's definitely um, demonstrated cases where if red flag had been in place and had been able to be used, uh, we could have potentially prevented people from being killed. And I want to point to a specific case that happened here in Colorado Springs. This was a few years back before red flag happened. There was a, a young man who was um, dealing with some mental health issues. His parents lived on the East Coast. Uh, they actually uh, were trying to get a hold of the son and then got on a plane because they were so concerned about uh, his well-being and what he might or might not do. It turns out that son was suffering from a severe mental disease and he started walking down the street on Halloween morning and shot several people. A red flag uh, intervention in a case like that would have saved lives because it would have prevented him from um, possessing the firearms that he had in his possession at the time. Uh, Let's let's keep in mind though that it, that's not a fail safe. If a criminally minded person uh, who is intent on carrying out violence wants to get a gun on the black market, it's really not that hard to obtain a gun on the black market 
in our country. Uh, and that's just the reality of it. Mr. Allen, thank you very much for your time. I know it's a difficult case. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it.